the 30, 25, and pushed out of bounds. Waller, a big first down run all the way uh, from the 35-yard line to the 15, a gain of 20. So the Braves in the no huddle here going fast. Felix Harper puts it in the belly of Waller again, and he stood up and dropped for a yard pickup. This uh, Savannah State defense could be stingy. The tackle made by Desmond Young, the linebacker, second down and nine for the Braves. This drive started at their 25-yard line. They're in the red zone. They're at the 14 of the Tigers of Savannah State. Lost to Florida Tech, but beat Virginia Lynchburg, Benedict, and Morehouse, and lost to Charleston Southern 24-19. And that's their blowing a 19-3 lead. Second down and nine from the 14. Trey Turner in motion, and here's a pass low, and Turner falls on it. It's going to be ruled incomplete. All right, uh, Cedric Bush, the Braves are a little bit behind the chain. Third and nine coming up here. I'm going to look for Harper to pull us out of here, Kyle. He's, he's looked good so far. Um, with Duffy not being in there, that, that, you know, that, that, with that explosion, it's going to be interesting to see what they call. Well, Cedric Tillman Conte is ever at a tight end in the ball game now in third and nine. Yeah, let's see what they do. They might get him out in the flat or, or something to work those linebackers. They had a pick, all, a pick, but it was called back on a defensive hold on third down. Play action for Harper. Look, throws, and a caught touchdown. On a third down and nine, Pringle with the touchdown from 14 yards out. So Latrell Pringle is sixth touchdown of the season. And the Braves draw first blood. Cedric Bush going 75 yards. Well, like I said before, the offense is coming to the home now. They're, they're believing in, in this guy, Harper. Harper. And quarterback, and that, that's their leader right now. Cedric uh, Tillman, what a start here. And a nice touch pass, I thought, just kind of threaded the needle. Nice touch pass to Pringle. Oh, yeah, he was wide open, come across that middle, and uh, just nice, uh, he was wide open, nice throw and catch. And McCullough's PAT is perfect. Right, and the Braves are up 7 to nothing, going 75 yards. A little over two minutes in, the Braves with a 7 to nothing lead. We'll take a one-minute break. We'll be right back after this timeout here on the Alcorn Football Radio Network. out of bounds for Savannah State. Caught it out of bounds was a Brian Roberts had a foot on the out of bounds line. He caught it at the nine yard line. So that's where Savannah State will get the football. The Braves defensively up front. Creo argue and Chris Hart, Daryl Henderson, and Chris Monroe the tackles. The linebackers are Mikhail Webb, Solomon Muhammad who had two picks last week. And Leon Hollis. Morrison who had a pick last week. One corner Followed by Dalen Burks, who had picks, and Terry O'Cole, and Tehran Kinsler, the safety. All right, let's take a look at this triple option attack led by Devon Gibbons. Gibbons, the 6'3", 205-pound junior from Stone Mountain, Georgia. I think that's how they say it, Georgia. Well, first down. And here's a big hole, a big run of the 20, 25, outside the 25 to the 29-yard line. They put it in the belly of Durham, and you heard... On the pregame show, Travis Jadon, he said they're going to feed him early and a first down all the way out to the 29-yard line. So big gain there, a gain of 20 for Durham. He had a nine-yard run last week, has 410 yards on 79 carries and four touchdowns. On first down, Gibbons out of the pistol. And again, another hole. 
for Durham. Durham carries a couple of Braves with him to the 34 and a half. A pickup of six, second down and four. So you see right away, nothing surprising as Durham comes out of the ball game. And now Enidge Carter will check into the lineup, the 5'8 freshman from Poughkeepsie, New York, into the lineup on second down and four. At the 34-yard line of all corn, seven to nothing. The Braves with the lead. A hard snap count. They scan. Gibbons had a 49-yard touchdown run last week in the loss to Charleston Southern, so you have to count for him on second down and four. A little option. He'll keep it. Brought around and dropped for a gain to the 35-yard line, about a half-yard gain. All right, Cedric Tillman, what does Cedric Thornton's defense have to dial up here on third down and three? Yeah, I was a little confused because I thought they were a triple option team, but they're coming out uh, a little spread there. And, uh, so let's see what they do. I think you try to keep the Braves off balance here. Third down and three, D'Angelo Durham got a blow for a play. Now back in to the right of Gibbons. Third and three from the 35. They need to get to the 38, seven and nothing. All corners the lead on third down. Durham will keep it. Bounces to the outside to the 40. Lowers his shoulder and is popped by Bruce. Carries him a couple more yards. They pop him at the 40 and he's down to 42 and it's a first down. So Von Gibbons calling his own number and a first down. A couple of first downs now for this Savannah State team. On paper, they're D2. But clearly they have D1 talent as Fred McNair and Travis Dodd alluded to in the pregame. Seven to nothing, the Braves with the lead. But the Savannah State Tigers team left to right. A couple of first downs. They have it at the 42 yard line. Gibbons clap, looks, the lefty throw, score out too far. They don't throw it that much. They were looking for the tight end, Julian Roberts, the tight end, the freshman from Savannah, with one reception. Second down and 10 from the 42. Four and a half minutes into this first quarter. Big games in the Southwestern Athletic Conference already. One game underway. Valley playing at Arkansas Pine Bluff. And with a minute and a half left till halftime, UAPB with a 14 to 6 lead over Mississippi Valley. Of course, Valley won a high scoring game against Lynchburg last week. Second down and 10 from the 42. They're on 42. And our quarterback will keep it. And he steps out of a couple of tackles and he's brought down for a gain of 10 and a half. And a Brave is down. They took the dive and Gibbons kept it, turned it upfield, and picked up about nine and three quarters. And a Brave is injured back at the 35 yard line. And as Brave is injured, they took the dive. And that is Creole Argue that is shaken up. It's going to bring a third down and short coming up. With 10-17 left in this first quarter. So Creole argues shaking up. We'll take a time out here. 7 to nothing. the Braves the lead. Back in one minute here on the Braves Sports Network. Creole argue hobbling. It looks like his right foot can't put any weight on it. Uh, Cedric Tillman, as we check in with you, um, when Darius Anderson went down early on, um, any status on him? Yeah, he's just on the sideline. Looks like maybe a shoulder injury or something. He's just moving his arms around, trying to stay loose. See if he's able to come up here. All right, got to check on argue as well. So Anderson and argue. There's a first down, by the way. Uh, they look at it in first down in Alcorn territory. And then they go with the dive straight ahead and a yard pickup. They're just trying to keep you honest. They're on first down. And uh, not much to it. Carter 
and it's Carter, the freshman for from Poughkeepsie, New York. First couple of carries of the season in this game stays in. A yard pickup, second down and nine. The Tigers in the Braves' territory at the 47. Already 9.40 left in the first quarter. Braves with a 7 nothing lead, went 75 yards. A touchdown pass from Felix Harper to Pringle on second down. Dive again, strike right side. And Carter brought down by Henderson. All right, Judge Bush, third down and a long eight coming up here for Savannah State. I'm thinking they're going to go back to the old quarterback. Um, I have to be careful with that, you know, because, you know, like I said before, you have to make sure that you're accountable for the quarterback. That's, that's the biggest thing. You can't get caught looking in the backfield. Yeah. You've got to take your man. That's right. Speaking of their man, D'Angelo Durham, the man in the backfield, the sophomore from Augusta, mm -hmm. in the backfield. Third down and eight. Back. Flushed out to his left, dances, and he's going to take off, and he's got an open opening, and here's a pass down the field, and this ball caught and <laughs> dropped. Man, the quarterback, Gibbons, could have ran for the first down, and it'll bring up fourth down, and the Braves caught a break right there because the quarterback, Gibbons, could have ran for the first down. He overshot his wide receiver, kick lighter. And it'll bring up fourth down. And Cedric Tillman, we caught a break right there because Gibbons could have ran for a first down. Yeah, we, we definitely should have been a sack. And then we just uh, we caught, got caught in the secondary there. And he was definitely wide open. He dropped that behind the side. And Lou go on to kick. 31st punt of the season, averaging 39.2. The snap and the kick. Short kick in this wind. Anthony gets away from it. Sideways roll out of bounds around the 15 yard line. So with eight and a half left, we'll take a timeout here. Braves with their second touch up seven to nothing. Back in a minute. This is Braves football. During the break, Waller for a yard, second down and nine for the Braves at the 16. Harper back to pass, steps up. Harper spun around, stays on his feet, and falls forward to the 20. Picked up a couple. They mark him at the 19. So third down and six here, Cedric Bush for the Braves. Third and six with 7.40 left in the first quarter. Seven to nothing, all for him. I think it gives the ball to Waller and his. He looks pretty healthy. Uh, that, that, that layoff did him well. Third down and six. Let's see what Elliot Ratton comes up with here offensively. Looks like a Pringle to the left, slot man left, tight formation right. Harper straight back to pass. Looks, looks, pump fake throws, and this ball caught. A first down. Or Harper stayed in there, and Chris Blair with the reception for the first down. Chris Blair, 16th reception of the year with three touchdowns. A first down for the Braves on third down and six. Drive continues at the 32-yard line, seven to nothing. The Braves with the lead. Wallace shifts to the right of Harper, tied in in motion, and we got a false start here. It appears penalties were the story. 13 penalties last week by the Braves. Let's see if this is on the defense or. False start on the offense. False start. 77 on the offense. Five yard penalty. It's to be first down. All right, so the false start on the Braves. Joseph Milburn, the junior. So first down and 15. Fred McNair talked about that, Cedric Bush, with these false starts, these pre snap penalties. 
Correction, the false start was on number 72. up a couple second down and long with six and a half minutes left in this first quarter a bunch of games in the conference including the game of the week today at six o'clock at aw mumford stadium the jaguars host the panthers yeah that'll be a good one it's gonna be a good one second down and 13 for the braves after the five yard penalty and the two yard pickup harper straight back to pass with throws it high and complete stepped into it and sail it over the head of Juan Anthony. All right, Cedric Tillman, you got a third down and 13 coming up behind the chains here. Yeah, that, that was a nice play. He was just overshot him a little bit. He was open. And uh, let's see what we can do here, pick this up. All right, third down and 13 for the Braves. Let's see what Elliot Ratton comes up with here offensively. This penalty hurt him. Let's see if we can make up for it on this third down pickup. Third down and 13 from the 30-yard line. Need to get to the 43. They're showing pressure and they're coming. Harper looks. He's going to lob this one. A pop fly ball. Uh -oh. It's on the side. Down the sidelines. And a 20 to the 10. Oh, yeah. oh, and yeah. it's a touchdown. touchdown. It's a touchdown for the Braves. Chris Blair on the blitz. Harper picked it up in a high fly ball to Chris Blair in the center field. And he ran under it and ran to the end zone. That looked like a pop fly ball, Cedric Bush, that the center fielder ran under it and got it. That's as pretty as you're going to see a ball being thrown and a receiver receiving it and finishing the play like it's going to be done. The Braves with a two-score lead. They brought the blitz, Cedric Tillman, and they got burned by it. Yeah, he had him one-on-one, -on -one and he just kind of manhandled him down the sideline. <laughs> couldn't And now we've got another penalty here on this snap. This could be... Another false start by the Braves. They're up 13 to nothing. Cedric Tillman, Chris Blair had a hand injury last week. Wasn't involved that much in the offense, but clearly a big play right there. Offside, defense, number 99, half a distance, retry. He did. He said he'll be ready to go. He said he's got, he's got his brothers to pick up the slack, and now it's his turn to pick up the slack, and he's be able to touch down right there. 5.54 left in the first quarter. Braves up 13 and nothing on Savannah State. Big game, a big play so far in this one. McCullough on for the PAT. Kick is up, and it's perfect. 14 and nothing. The Braves with the lead here in this first quarter. Glad you can join us here on the All Corn Football Radio Network. Braves with a 14 nothing lead. We'll be back after this on the All Corn Sports Radio Network. Hardage on the return for Savannah State at the 12-yard line. They get the 13, first down from there. Braves off to a nice start, 547 left. Cedric Bush, you can't ask for a better start. A game of big plays. We're behind the chains a couple of times. So Felix Harper hanging in there. And just, I mean, a nice touch pass. His touchdowns both have been touch passes. Touch passes. Nice soft touch on him. Yeah, he's coming into his own. I, I, you know, like, we saw him three, four weeks ago. Offside, defense number 92 with conduct. Five-yard penalty, be first down. Not happy, and 
That's the second free snap penalty. T. Wayne Jones said that Tillman jumped. Got to do with these free snap penalties here on defense. Yeah, we just can't have that as first play of the series. Yeah. That's first down and five. And now Savannah State stands here with 5.47 left in the first quarter. Gibbons out of the shotgun. There's a pass caught on the check down. And uh, progress out to the 25-yard line. Hubbard's with the tight end with the catch. And a first down at the 26-yard line with five and a half left in this first quarter. 14 to nothing. Pringle and Blair with two touchdown receptions. First down at the 26-yard line. Gibbons. And the lead will keep it. Gibbons to the 25, 30, down the sideline. 40, goes out of bounds. It's going to be another first down. A gain of 15 at the 40-yard line. Well, I tell you what, they're, they're making this uh, they're making this option, triple option work here, says the book. You know, Coach spoke about it earlier. You know, this team is coming in, like you say, Division two on paper, but they're not... They're not that team. They're not that team they're talking about. And Gibbons guy, he's all the offense they have right now. That's Gibbons and Durham. First down, tight formation yeah. here. It's a triple option look. They fake the toss and Gibbons steps out of a couple of tackles and he goes down. The uh, flag is down. This might be a face, face mask. mask. Looks like Morrison came in on the sack, but let's check this mark. I think it's a face mask here coming up against the Braves. Well, they had 13 penalties last week. I think he's got three. First and foul, face mask, defense number 45. 15-yard penalty, be first down. Quarterback does not have to leave the football game because of the foul. So now Savannah State in Braves territory at the 45-yard line. And the referees left the flag behind. So now Savannah State in Braves territory again at the 45-yard line. So this opens up the options here, in this triple option attack. Durham in the backfield, Gibbons out of the shotgun. Play action, looks throws wide open, caught at the 35-yard line, missed tackle, two missed tackles on a first down at the 20-yard line. The catch and run that time by Dante Devereaux, the receiver. Well, Devereaux, the wide receiver, a couple of missed tackles on that play. So you got the face mask, 15-yarder, and a couple of tackles missed on that play. And Savannah State approaching the red zone at the 23-yard line. Four minutes left in the first quarter. The Braves with a 14-0 lead, Cedric Bush. So what do you see here and what Savannah State's doing offensively? They're mixing up pretty good. Um, I think Coach Jordan is kind of <laughs> he's trying to figure out what, what, what's going on because they're running a triple option. They give them different looks. Uh, then zone read. <laughs> And here is Gibbons on the yeah, keeper, and the yeah, pitch is yeah. wide open, 20, 15 to the 10, and it's going to be a first down there at the 10-yard line. Major Bellamy, the junior from Lawrenceville, Georgia. Well, they're making this thing go here, Cedric Tillman. They're, they're making it work for him. First down and goal, Tigers. Oh, okay. Cedric, first down and goal here for Savannah State. Definitely a spot for this right here, Charles. We're going to see if we can the defense can hold the hit. What do you see in this offense and what Savannah State's doing or what we're not doing? Well, uh, it might have been just a misassignment over there. Nobody was there to take the pitch on that one. All right, first down and goal. Gibbons will keep it. Gibbons inside the 10, and he's brought down at the 7 yard line. Second and goal. We have 2.55 left in this first quarter. Touchdown passes, Harper to Blair, Harper to Pringle. But here comes Savannah State. They were in Braves territory the last time they had the football. Second and goal from the seven with 240 left in the first quarter. Braves 14, Savannah State 7 here on homecoming. No, 14 to nothing, I'm sorry. On second down, Gibbons will keep it again, and he's brought down. A loss back to the nine-yard line. A loss of 
a couple. And it'll bring up third down. Juwan Taylor, we talked with him on the pregame show. On third down and goal from the 10-yard line here, Cedric Bush. That, that, that's what you have to do. Do your assignment. Stop being entertained and do the assignment. That's, that's, that's what Coach Doris teaches. Durham in the backfield, the pistol formation. Play clock at 13. We have two minutes left in the first quarter. They scan to the left. Third down and goal from the 10-yard line. Durham in the backfield. Play action. Looks, throws, and it's incomplete. The pass went right through the hands of Savannah State kick or kick lighter fourth down and now you're going to see a field goal attempt coming up here by Lugo he does all the kicking duties so this um, will be a 27 yard field goal attempt by Lugo and they had it first and goal from the 10 148 left in the first quarter snap back ball now kick is up and the kick is good three points for savannah state and they're on the board as the braves are up 14 to 3 with 143 left in this first quarter braves football is brought to you in part by ceasefire while mississippi university is compete at football when it comes to cutting edge research they need to work together that's why Ceasefire linked our state's leading research universities together with a 100 gigabit per second fiber infrastructure, working in support of the Mississippi Optical Network. Through the Ceasefire Tech Movement, we're empowering schools and universities with the technology to help them lead research and development for a better future. Learn more at ceasefire.com slash mission. Back here at Jack Spinks Marino Castle Stadium. Cedric Bush, one thing we have seen, we have seen the Savannah State team move the football, and I think clearly, Fred McNair said in the pregame, they got our attention, and even though we're up 14 to three, Savannah State has been able to move the football. That, that's what makes this team more dangerous than the team we saw with Mississippi College. They have the Willies and Joes that can match what we're doing. Our guys just have to play a time of football and play it all the way through the game. Braves have Anthony and Morrison back. Morrison averaging 17.8 yards per kickoff return. Anthony averaging 12. Lugo on the kick. They're on homecoming. And here is the kick straight up the chute. And it looks like uh, well, it's going to be taken down by Anthony for a touchback. So the Braves will get it at the 25-yard line with 143 left. Well, Cedric Tillman, as we check in with you, this uh, Savannah State team can move the football. They had a pass out in the flat. That receiver dropped right there would have picked up some yards. They need to get in the end zone, obviously, but this Savannah State team can move it a little bit. Yeah, they, they definitely have a couple of miscues there. If they executed on it, uh, they possibly could have got in the end zone this time. What do you see in Felix Harper? Just looks so poised, making nice throws, looks very comfortable out there. Yeah, it, I just really love his pocket awareness, man. He, he just knows knows his surroundings and know how to get that football out of there. And just a quick hitter, and this is a catch. And it's going to be a first down, Akeem McNair with the catch. So Akeem McNair, first down. That's his seventh reception of the season. So Akeem McNair, now 15-yard reception. And now here's Waller wide open, inside, outside, and brought down at midfield, a gain of about 10. It's a first down. So the Braves going fast here. They're ready to snap it already. Here is a little check down. A team McNair is going to be dropped for maybe a half-yard loss out on the left edge. Tackle made by Donahue. Second down and 10. We have a minute left in this first quarter here on homecoming. 30 minute first quarter rolling right along. Braves up 14 to three in that midfield. Gain of nine second down. Well, I think it's gonna be first down here as Harper looks throws and caught again a key McNair. McNair on this drive. First down pick up. Well, it was first and 10, they had a second and 10. So third down and a couple. So 
a third and two for the Braves. Not huddling up here. On third down and two, Kendrick Brown in a slot off to the right side. Third down and short. You have Waller to the right of Harper. And they put it in his belly, and Harper is dragged down for a loss of a yard. Dragged down for a one-yard loss. Fourth down, and that takes us to the end of the first quarter. And Fred McNair has to make a decision here. Fourth down and three. Steven Reeves with the tackle. Back in a minute. 14 to three. The Braves with the lead. Back after this timeout. This is Braves football. Fourteen to three, the Braves with the lead. Fourth down and three, and the decision has been made. The Braves are going to play football, and Corey McCullough on to punt it away. Thirty-fourth punt for McCullough, averaging forty-two and a half yards per kick. He's standing at his forty-three yard line. The snap and the kick, mile high in the end. This wind, and it's going to go out of bounds, probably around. 12 or 13 yard line, 14, 15, oh no, 18. So we're just underway here in this second quarter at halftime. We're going to talk with Marcus Ward, our annual homecoming conversation about fundraising and marketing, the executive director of the Alcorn Foundation and the vice president of institutional advancement. Well, Cedric Tillman, to check in with you, uh, any injury update on uh, RG who went down in the first quarter? Uh, right now, Charles, he's still in the tent. So he may be done for the day. He has a shoulder pain, so I can still evaluate him. Okay. Well, no uh, Nico Duffy in this game. And the Braves do have some guys in the BNP list who did not participate the last few weeks. And now Gibbons will keep it, turns it upfield, and Gibbons is going to be sandwiched and dropped at the 22-yard line. A pickup of four, second down and six for Savannah State. First quarter numbers, the Braves out game, Savannah State 187 to 102. Savannah State actually out gaining the Braves on the ground, 71 yards to 50. Felix Harper, seven of nine, 137 yards. So he's on track to have a monster day throwing the football. Penalties. Braves with three first quarter penalties to just one for Savannah State through the first quarter on second down. And they go back to the run here and a good hard run. And running the football is Durham. You talk about Bull Durham. He looked like a Bull Durham right there. He's a load. Yep. A 6 1, 210 pound sophomore from Augusta, Georgia. And he's the workhorse, and as Travis Jadon told us in the pregame, he seems to get better as the game rolls along. So first down at the 30-yard line, they don't huddle up. Quarterback Devon Gibbons, the junior from Stone Mountain, out of the gun. And just a straight handoff. And not much there. About a, about a yard. So Durham a yard carry, second down. And... Nine other games in the league, and we'll be following those. Pine Bluff over Valley, 21 to six early in the third quarter. Late first quarter, A&M and Grambling scoreless. Bama State over Jackson State, seven to nothing. 
131 left in the first. Second down and nine. Gibbons rolling to his right, rolling, gets the edge, turns it upfield 30, and tripped up at the 34 yard line. Cedric Tillman, third down and six, coming up for the Savannah State Tigers. Third and six, Cedric Tillman, what do you expect from Thornton's defense here? Well, let's, let's see what he dials up here. Uh, I think they're playing off right now. Third, this is the home here. Third down and six. Well, they scan here, take a lot of time off the play clock. It shows 10. 12 19 left till halftime. So I have a quick game with both teams running the football. Third down and six for Gibbons. Three step drop, pass deflected, picked off. It was deflected at the line, and that's Jalen Burke with his second pick. That ball deflected. I'd like to see who got a hand on that ball. It was deflected, and Burke was right there. Johnny on the spot. A team that doesn't throw it that much. Uh, pick. And the Braves coming off five turnovers defensively against Bama State. Gets one right there on the third down and six. And the Braves will have it at the 47-yard line of Savannah State. So Burke, who had a pick last week, had six turnovers in a game and a half has said just blitz for the Braves defense. No doubt about it. Um, <laughs> I guess they got a chance to come around and get the ball back to Alcorn. Let us move the ball down the field. Offensively. Here's Juan Anthony setting in the scene for a nine-yard pickup. Boy, the Braves just look so comfortable offensively. Wow. Can do what they want to do when they want to do it. They pick up the blitz. Felix gets it out of his hands. They can run it. Second down and one. They'll probably run it here. They scan. They have Waller to the right. Looks like Tim McNair to the right. Anthony in the slot. Pringle to the left on second down. And here's Waller dumped at the 40-yard line. He lost a couple. So third down and a long two coming up for the Braves. This uh, Savannah State team can be stingy defensively. They have a guy named John Wilson who could be playing on Sundays, a grad student. Mm -hmm. We have another kid in Walter Yates who had 100 tackles as a freshman last year. We've got to keep an eye on Third down and three for the Braves at the 40-yard line. They need to get to the 37. On third down, there's a pass, and it's caught to the 20, to the 10, and it's a touchdown, Pringle. Pringle on a third down and three, a 40-yard reception. It's just like taking candy from a child. Taking candy from a baby. I mean, he picked up pressure, Cedric Tillman, throws the defense, and on the post, Pringle was gone for the touchdown, 35 yards. Yeah, he throws me for a second because I couldn't <laughs> tell where the ball was. <laughs> I saw the ball come out, and Pringle was running down the field, but he was wide open in the middle of that. Yeah, he's, he's, I mean, you know, offense is caught up with the defense. You know, that, you know three weeks ago we talked about something totally different, but you can see the defense catching up, I mean, offense catching up with the defense. So the Braves with a 21-3 lead in the second quarter, 10-53 left till halftime. We'll take a one-minute break. We'll be right back from Jack Spinks, Marino Castle Stadium. This is Braves football. Twenty-one to three. Here's a return from the four-yard line to the ten. 
down the sideline, 20, 25, 30. It goes out of bounds outside of the 30 to the 35 yard line. A 31 yard return by Roberts. So 31 yard return right there. A good field position here. You're, you're not going to see very many punts and kickoff returns these days due to just the violent collisions that we've seen on special teams. A lot of players, even in the NFL, fair catching stuff, kicking it out of the back of the end zone. Just don't see many returns. Yeah, those are the plays that you got the guy running full speed for 40, 50 yards, and you make a collision, so it, it, it makes a lot of sense. Go back to the run and with the carry, a loss of a uh, loss of a yard. Second down and eleven. We approach ten minutes left till halftime. Long halftime coming up. Obviously, with halftime, the extended halftime. Sound of dynamite, a homecoming performance. Wonder what you have the alumni band and cheerleaders and all that at halftime. And we'll be talking with uh, Marcus Ward. At halftime, on second down, they go back to the run here, just trying to be basic to try to punch it through. And they bring up third down coming up as they go back to the run. Carter with the run, third down, Judge Bush, third down, and a long five, close to six needed for the first down. That's a 39, they need to get to the 45, third and six. Play action, play action pass. Nine and a half left in this first half. We're at 45 minutes first half. We have nine and a half minutes left till halftime. 21 to three, the Braves will lead on third down. And now they get it to Carter, and the Braves swarm him, and he's dropped at the 42 yard line, picked up three, fourth down and a couple for Savannah State. Fourth and two, and at their own 43 yard line, they need to get to the 45. We assume they're going to play football here and kick it away, but the offense is on the field. Going for it. Or maybe just a <laughs> kick. Maybe the quarterback will have Pooch the option kick. to pooch kick. Yeah. And it's showing as if they're going for it. 14 on the play clock. Fourth down and a couple coming up here. Seven on the play clock. They're going for a quarterback keeper, oh. and he's got the first down. Given some fourth down, he clapped and snapped his way up the line of scrimmage and a first down at the 43-yard line. Here we go again, being in his team. <laughs> All right, so the drive continues. First down and 10 in Braves territory there, Cedric Tillman. They got a little gutsy there and picked up the first. Yeah, just a little fake up, up the middle there, and he picked up some yards. Here's a square out pass, high caught inside the 30, popped at the 28-yard line, and the yeah. catch is made on that near side by Hartage. Yeah. Nice. Hartage with the catch, and it's a first down. Here comes Savannah State at the 27-yard line with 7.53 left. 21 to 3 the Braves with the lead but here comes Savannah State approaching the red zone at the 28 yard line uh, they scan here to the right three receivers to the right strong side right Gibbons option he's dropped Nice play, blowing it up that time by Kamate Key. Key, the sophomore from Gainesville, Florida. Speaking of Florida, big SEC game, Florida at LSU tonight. Two nationally ranked teams. We'll update the SWAC scoreboard as we roll along here. That A&M Grambling game, interesting. Scoreless in the second quarter. And Bama State leads Jackson State 7-0 in the second quarter. Just underway at Memorial Stadium. Second down and 15. And now they go with the fullback dive inside, and he's dropped. It's with the carry. So third down and 16. 
So third, third and 16 from the 34 yard line. You get to the 18, third and 16. And this may be four down territory. From here, you're looking at a 51 yard field goal. He's probably not gonna kick that. So depending on what they pick up here, it will, could be four down territory. Third down coming up, Carter in the backfield. Givens out of the shotgun. Now he lines up in motion, and now Givens will take off. She has a tackler to the 35. He's to the 30 before he's rustled down there. Oh, and a late flag. Oh, wow. wow. At the end. That hurts. Late flag thrown a mile away right at the 30-yard line. A face mask from that distance just thrown that flag thrown so far. They may pick it up maybe. Nope, looks like it's going to be called. Here we go. First of face mask, 49 on the defense. Solomon Muhammad call for the face mask. I like to look at that one again. Yeah, great defensive play. You don't need that. Uh, that one I like to see. He must have been going on the ground when Solomon grabbed the face mask. Yeah, that was pretty fast. All right, so half the distance, they have it at the 15-yard line. So here comes Savannah State in the red zone. I have to believe that this is four-down territory. I don't think they're going to kick a field goal here, no matter what happens. First down, live formation, play action, looks, throws, and this ball is caught. It's oh, a touchdown oh. on the play fake. Touchdown, Cameron White, the grad student, the 6'4" grad student from Atlanta. The back judge had to look and make sure he hauled it in. Let's see on the replay. Well, I like to of course all scoring plays are reviewed. The referee got a good, the back judge got a good look at it and he held it held on to it. Well, that makes it 21 to 9. I like to get a look at it here. A little swing and gate action. And now they'll set up for the PAT by Lugo. 531 left till halftime. Snap back ball now. Kick is up and it's perfect. 21 to 10. And Savannah State hanging around here on homecoming with five and a half left till halftime. Braves 21, Tigers 10. Back in 60 seconds on the Alcorn Football Radio Network. All right, back here live at Jack Spinks Marino Castle Stadium, 21 to 10. Savannah State hanging around, and here is the return. Morrison to the 15-yard line. More, there's a flag down, blocking the back coming up here. Morrison out to the 23-yard line. 5:25 left. Well, Cedric Tillman, Savannah State marching down the field. It converted a fourth down and a touchdown, to make it an 11-point game. Yeah, we just got to get a handle on these penalties, and that's what exactly. During the return, blocking the back, game. 41 to return team. And this one will be half a distance. Well. Be first down. We have 13 oh, penalties. I think we've got six or seven in this first half here, Cedric Tillman. So we definitely have to continue to work on cutting those down, obviously. All right, so first down for the Braves, and they're going to be backed up inside their 10 at the nine. Well, we had talked about penalties that much, but 13 penalties against Bama State. We've got at least six in this first half. All right, first down and 10 from the nine-yard line. Be careful here. Raise up 21 to 10. Here's Harper. Pump fake sack. Fumble. Savannah State's got it, and it's going to be a touchdown for wow. Savannah State. 
Wow, that is unreal. Harper was stripped. Ball recovered in the end zone by Cam Brown, the defensive lineman. And we've got an injured Tiger in the end zone. Tigers just got in the end zone. I like to see that if it's an empty hand or a fumble. Let's take a look at it, we hope. I like to look at that again. And an injured Tiger and a turnover. Remember, Felix Harper threw a pick that was denied due to a defensive holding penalty, but Felix was stripped right there, Cedric Tillman, and there were three or four Savannah State Tigers right there. Yeah, that was a clean strip. That ball did come out, so uh, you know, just great play by them. You know, we, we were trying to throw the football, and they came at us. Uh, it's 21-16, to 16, and an injured Tiger in the end zone. 5-18 left in this first half. We'll take a break. Savannah State Lining up for a PAT. It was 21 to 3, now 21 to 16. We'll take a one minute break. We'll be right back after this on the Alcorn Football Radio Network. A stun, Jack Spinks Marino, Castle Stadium. We have an injured Tiger in the end zone. And uh, he's not moving very much. Felix Harper, I like to get a look at that last touchdown by Savannah State. Felix pump fake. And it was stripped from his blind side. And, uh, looks like the injured Tiger sitting up now. All the medical personnel from Alcorn and Savannah State. But definitely, Cedric Tillman, Savannah State bringing some pressure. Felix has stepped up and has found his receivers, but that time he was stripped. Yeah, they got to him in time. You know, it, you know, he had enough time to get that ball out of there. He actually had, I believe it was a Blair, was actually streaking down the, the middle of the field wide open, but he just couldn't get the ball out. And not only that, got a couple of injuries to, to deal with, and it looks like uh, the injured Tiger is okay. And uh, for Savannah State, that is Salik McRae, the 6'3 sophomore from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, it's homecoming, hmm. and it's a homecoming game, and we got a game here, we Cedric Bush. We have a game. We have a game. I mean, like Coach said, you know, hey, this team's coming in to play tonight. They're going to do what they do. They do, they do it well. I promise you, they're not making a bunch of penalties. They're not. They're very disciplined. They're not the hoorah, they just come in here to play football. And you have to look at that first drive the Braves had when Felix Harper threw a pick, but it was called back due to a defensive holding penalty that kept our drive alive, and we scored on that. So that's the difference in the game, or, or else Savannah State would have had the football right there. They run the swinging gate here. They shift some left and right. Lugo on for the point after with 5.18 left. High snap ball down, kick is up, and the kick is good. 21 to 17 and we'll take another time out right here we'll be right back after this on the Braves Sports Network
All right, here is the kick. Caught at the 12-yard line by Morrison, reversing his field to the 20, 25. Morrison to the 31. A 19-yard return. 5-10 left till halftime. It was 21 to three and 14 unanswered. A turnover that led to a touchdown in the end zone, the latest score. And with 5-10 left, until halftime, the Braves with a 21-17 lead, and Savannah State will get the ball to begin the second half. So let's see if we can get it done here with Trey Turner in the backfield to the right of Felix Harper. The Braves come out with three receivers right, one left. And here is Turner. A gain of three. Trey Turner kind of put the finishing touches on the Alabama State game with his carries in last week's game. Had 30 yards rushing. Trey Turner with that carry. That's his 30th of the season. And Trey Turner with a touchdown. Second down and seven. This has turned out to be a gain. A game, a gain of three for Turner, second down and seven from the 34. Harper looks left throws and just sitting in the seam is Chris Blair. And it's going to be a first down just oh, set me on the marker. And they mark him at the 41. It's a first down. Four and a half left in this first half. I wonder, could you say this is a four-minute offense? Savannah State trying to substitute here. They're trying to get that players off the field. Snap it. And the center didn't snap it. Wow. They had about 14 people on the field at that time. Now they scan. Hmm. Savannah State had three players running off the field, and they didn't snap it. That would have been an illegal substitution. And now the Braves wow. run the football here, and that didn't go anywhere as Trey Turner tackled back at the 37-yard line, a loss of four. Well, Cedric Tillman, we could have had a penalty there on on Savannah State that would have helped us. Instead, Trey Turner's run hurt us right there, loss of five. Yeah, uh, well, I couldn't tell if the, the referee was over the ball or not, but I guess the center couldn't see to, to his far left that, uh, to get that ball out. Yeah. Second down and 14. Harper straight back to pass. Here comes pressure. Harper will check down, and this is a catch. It's Akeem McNair for no gain. So to bring up third down and 14. This is a big play in this first half here, Cedric Bush. 316 left, 14 unanswered by Savannah State. They've got the momentum. You're behind the chains. Third and 14 coming up here from your 37. Only up 21 to 17. Mr. Moe is something, and you can see the momentum switching from all from Alcorn to Savannah. And they're forcing the issues. Third down. Harper back to pass, looking left, flushed out. Let's gonna lob this one long for McNair. Don't can't get it. Put some air under it, and McNair couldn't run under it. And Felix says it's my fault. It was there, and then you got separation, but too far for Tim McNair Jr. Of course, no Mustafa Ibrahim at center. Joseph Milborn is our center at this point in time, with 2:46 left. Still halftime, and now a big punt coming up for McCullough. They'll be kicking into the wind. 2.46 left, slightly high snap, and the kick. You'll get away from it, and it sails out of bounds around the 23-yard line, maybe the 24, with 2.39 left till halftime. They mark it at the 23. At the half, we're going to talk with Vice President of Institutional Advancement and Executive Director of the Alcorn Foundation, Marcus Ward. He'll join us at halftime talking about fundraising. Of course, the big gala, the McNair Gala in Vicksburg. We'll talk about that and a bunch of other fundraising initiatives coming up at the half. Braves are off next week at a big date with the Jaguars here in two weeks. 
2 o'clock kickoff. First down from the 24-yard line. And they just go straight to the run. 25-yard line, a gain of a yard. He's trying to pound it out. Second down and nine. A one-yard pickup by D'Angelo Durham, who had a nine-yard touchdown run last week. Four touchdowns coming in. Second down and uh, let's call it eight. With 2.14 left till halftime. I think Savannah State wants to take their time. They want to give the ball back to the Braves with much time remaining. Mm-hmm. Play clock at 13. 2.04 left till halftime. Second down and eight for Gibbons. Gibbons will pitch out on the edge. The 20-yard line and a big hit. Ball squirts out of bounds. Salman Muhammad. And uh, Muhammad, yes, says they got it to Major Bellamy. So to bring up third down and eight, Cedric Tillman. Well, the Braves now have an opportunity to flip the field a little bit and get off the field. Yeah, I think the Braves defense is showing there on the field right there on that tackle. That was a nice hit. Let's see if we can uh, hold them here and get the defense off the field. Braves take a timeout on defense. Don't forget the Fred McNair radio show coming up on Monday night. We'll recap the action in this game, have the SWAC report, and look ahead to the bye week. Wow, Jackson State trailing Bama State 14-3 on homecoming. Wow. Actually, had Jackson State winning that game at home. Coach Hendricks. You know, was asked about his defense. Would he change things up, giving up almost 80 points in two weeks? Oh, wow. He said, nope, he's not going to change a thing. It's a low-scoring game. 9.28 left in the second. I think Jackson State's offense is still struggling, obviously. Second quarter scoreless at Grambling. Alabama A&M and Grambling with 4.06 left in the second. Big third and eight coming up here. Gibbons back to pass. Little check down. Intercepted! Return to the 30, to the 25, down the sideline. Jay Bruce cutting it inside. Bruce staying at home. And it's going to be around the 10-yard line. So A.J. Bruce staying at home with the pick. Like to see that one. Good job with his eyes. Alan Bruce, the senior, right shirt senior from Lake Providence, Louisiana. Well, the defense need to make a play right there, Cedric Tillman, and it did. Bruce with the pick. Yeah, that was a nice play. Quarterback threw it behind him, and he just kind of stayed at home. That great awareness uh, by Bruce and uh, a great pick. Well, we've seen this, uh, Cedric Bush. We get late points when the momentum looked like it was with the yes, the opposite team. Remember Prairie View? They had a chance for late points, and they turn it over late. We get points, and the same thing here. Yeah. All right. Waller to the left of Felix Harper. Play action for Harper. Steps up, throws, and his ball is caught. <laughs> oh. No, incomplete. He's out of bounds. Oh. Did he get a foot down? I thought he got a foot in. Chris Blair. Well, that's one I'd like to look at if we can. All right, let's see here. Good play fake. Steps up as Harper. Oh, he was bobbling it bobbling, as he went out yeah. of back in the end zone. Well, second down, stops the clock with 131 left. Braves up 21 to 17, but the defense just got a turnover. On second down, Harper back to pass. Pressure, it's sacked at the 25-yard line. Well, Harper tried to spin away, and the sack that time by Gugliate. And now the Braves have to take their second timeout. Well, Cedric Tillman, Felix Harper's got good escapability, and Savannah State bringing pressure. He tried to spin away and couldn't. Yeah, he couldn't get away from that one. I, th- I thought he had it, but he just couldn't get out of that street, shoe street tackle. That's awesome. Well, now you got to do what you can to preserve in this wind. You're kicking into the wind. Third down coming up. Third down and long. You need to get to the four-yard line. And you're at the 25, so third and 21 here, Cedric Tillman. Got to at least do what you can to preserve a field goal attempt here. Yeah, we definitely got to come away with some points here uh, going into halftime here, Charles. Of course, Cedric Tillman, well, I've had Coach Fred McNair, and he warned us about this, Cedric Bush. He said this Savannah State's no joke. Don't 
as they say in the streets, don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted. Uh, same, the same thing with the SID said, hey, they're going to do what they do. They're not going to stop playing. They're ready to play football. All right, so third down and 21 for the Braves. Harper looks, steps up, sheds a tackler. Harper could take off, but he throws. Wide Touchdown. open. All right. Touchdown. Chris Blair. He shed in a sack and found a wide open Chris Blair. Welcome back, Chris Blair, Chris bad Blair. hand and all. Nice play fake. They had pressure. Oh, this guy had him. And he steps up at Chris Blair with the touchdown. So, Felix Harper on a third and 21, making it happen. Couldn't avoid a sack on the previous play, avoided one there on a third and 21. It hits Chris Blair, who's had a big first half. 27 to 17. Snap back ball down, kick is up, and it's good. 28 to 17 with 112 left in the first half. We'll take a one minute break. We'll be right back after this. High scoring first half here on homecoming, 28 17. The Braves over Savannah State. We'll be back in a minute. This is Braves football. Good job by Felix Harper stepping up in the pocket and finding an open player. Well, here's the kick. And uh, it's going to be returned to yard deep in his end zone. The 10 yard line, 15, down the sideline to the 30. Down the sideline is a flag. And McCullough with the tackle. But this is going to be coming back. Two flags down from the 30 yard line. I think they'll probably start this at the 20 or the 15. McCullough saved the touchdown, but it wouldn't have mattered anyway, I don't think. Let's check the marker. There are two of them at the 30-yard line with 105 left here in this first half. Could be an illegal block, a hold. The, spot, the marker's at the 30-yard line, so this could be just as good as a... Well, they're looking, they're talking with Savannah State's coaches here. And, uh, this will be interesting. See what this call is. The referee and Savannah State coaches are standing at midfield. Well, Cedric, tell them what could this be here? At midfield. I'm not sure. They seem to be going over the penalty situation, but but why are they talking to the opposing team about the penalty if it's against them? <laughs> Could be on. Is it on us? All right, here we go. We'll get a call right here. Markers at the 30-yard line. There are two fouls on the play. During return, holding, number 48, that penalty will be enforced. Personal foul, face mask on the kicking team. They have chosen to re-kick. Those penalties were all set. We'll re-kick. Well, so there will be a re-kick. So we'll do it all over again. Well, Corey McCullough saved a touchdown right there. It got by the second wave. McCullough had the angle. A 
minute five left till halftime. 28 to 17. The Braves with the lead. Miss Carter, the freshman for Poughkeepsie, New York. With a big run. Or will they kick it to him again? Carter on the far side of the field. And on the near side of the field for Savannah State is Wilson. So Carter and Wilson back. Here is the kick. I think they're going to give Wilson a shot at it. And then went through his hands out of the back of the end zone. Get it at the 25. Minute five left till halftime. Oh. A penalty. McCullough's still on the field. This one called timeout. A penalty here, maybe against the Braves. A re-kick. Offside. Kicking team, yep. number 22. Five-yard penalty will be added to the end of return. First down. So they decide to take the five-yard penalty off the end of the, the play, which would have been at the 25. So they'll get it at the 30-yard line with 105 left. Well, Savannah State has all three of their timeouts and the way they move the football. Of course, they're going to have to throw it a little bit down the field. This quarterback, Devon Givens. 28-17, the Braves with the lead. And now they go back to the run here. And here's Durham down the sideline. Durham pushed out of bounds at midfield. Oh, a flag out at the end oh, of this play. Wow. Boy, these penalties Can't are we get killing up the us. Second quarter. And Fred McNair takes his headset off like, what are we doing? Yes. After the play. Personal foul, late hit out of bounds, number 32 of the defense. 15-yard penalty, Cold. be first down. Well, we've got about eight, maybe nine penalties nine in this first half. Yeah. And this gives Savannah State the football at the 34-yard line of Alcorn. With all three of your timeouts, 57 seconds left. Cedric Tillman, we didn't need that. Yeah, yeah, we, we definitely don't need them to score here. And they'll get the ball to begin the second half. So in basketball, this is kind of like the two for one. You get the last possession of the first half, the first possession of the second half. On first down, they'll just go back to the run here. Room to the 31-yard line. I pick up a three, and I think a timeout taken here by Savannah State. And they will take it right here. Braves football brought to you in part by C Spire. At Ceasefire, we're happy you're happy. An independent study showed customers are over twice as likely to recommend Ceasefire compared to the wireless industry average. Now that's happy. It starts with transparent billing, a network that's two times faster, one hour certified phone repair, and more. Get happy. Try Ceasefire. You'll notice the difference. Ceasefire, customer inspired. Get the 11 as low as $199 with trade in. Details at ceasefire.com. Back here at Jack Spinks Marino Castle Stadium. The Braves in this game were up 21 to 3. Made it 21 to 17, then 28 17. And now Savannah State with the football with two timeouts at the Braves 32 yard line with 49 seconds left. They've got all their options available. They could still run the football a little bit, they could use their timeouts. And let's see what Gibbons does here out of the shotgun. Gibbons on the read. There's a couple of missed tackles. And Stan on his feet and almost a first down pick up Bellamy to the 26. And they're going to burn another timeout. Timeout, Savannah State. They're second. Third down and two coming up here. So third and two, they're at the 26. They need to get to the 24. They have one timeout remaining. 39 seconds left. I think they'll go for it here, Cedric Bush, even if they don't get it. They picked up one fourth down. Well, Grambling at halftime leads Alabama A&M in a defensive tussle seven to nothing. 
UAPB all over Valley, 35 to six. Jackson State now down 14 to 10 to Alabama State. I tell you what, don't sleep on UAPB. No doubt about it. I mean, they lost 31 to seven to Southern a couple of weeks ago. I think that game was just a big matchup. They learned from it, and uh, Valley actually led six nothing early, but 35 on answer by the Lions. 35 to six in the fourth quarter with 14:47 remaining at Pine Bluffs Golden Lion Stadium. Third down and a couple. You got to watch Gibbons here on third down and two. Durham oh, all over his head. He picks it up and he looks and just throws it. And it's going to be an incomplete pass. They're going to rule an incomplete pass. They're going to rule it. And there's a flag down as well. It might be grounding. Brace contend it's a fumble. You got to take a look at this. Well, if, if he hit the ball, it's going to be kind of hard to call that, I think. The replay, the officials get together here, Cedric Tillman. This is a fumble or an incomplete pass. They might look at it. Uh, yeah, they're still talking about it. Uh, he tried to get it out, but I, I'm not sure if his arm went forward or not. Now Fred McNair wants an explanation. Apparently, it must be a fumble the way they're talking about position. 30 seconds left till halftime. All right, here's Jason the call. Rounding. Offense number three. He lost the down. Fourth down. All corners decided to take a 10 second runoff. Please reset the clock for 20 seconds. It'll start so on the line. 10 second runoff. So, Savannah State just took themselves out of field goal range. And they'll have the football. At the Braves 47. Well, I just got a couple questions about that because if it's intentional grounding, uh, well, I thought the ball was hit. So how could you call attention to grounding? Yeah, that's the question. You know, that, that's what we sent from up here on the playback. The ball was hit, you know, so how can you call that grounding? Yeah, that's, so it should have been a fumble. It should have been a fumble or whatever you want to call it, incomplete pass or uh, fumble. That, yeah. Those are the two calls that you can make with that. Right. And Savannah State will just let the time run off the clock. And I'll take us to halftime. Entertaining homecoming game, right? Wow. And Fred McNair still wants an explanation right there. And, uh, we're going to hear from Fred McNair coming up here. It's 28 to 17 at the half. All right. Cedric Tillman with... Uh, Still talking with the referee and Braves head football coach Fred McNair. Well, coach, despite a couple of miscues there, we still got the lead right here. This sloppy play, we just got uh, too many penalties. Uh, seven fifty one. Uh, we just got to just. I mean, this this a ball game. Uh, they got a good football team, and we just got to come back second half and and play a whole lot better than we did. Since two thousand and eight, Energy has provided fifty thousand dollars in scholarships and up to $50,000 for paid internships for all corn students. This program makes sure our graduating students are prepared to enter the nuclear field and industries from nuclear power generation to health care. Presenting a check for $50,000 to all corn State University President Dr. Felicia Nay, VP for Institutional Advancement, Marcus Ward, Chairperson of Advanced Technology Dr. Jeremiah Biller, or Bettina Brandon, Alan Burks, and Vincent Bonds of Entergy, Mississippi. Thank you, Entergy Mississippi. Now joining Dr. Nave and Vice President Ward on the 50-yard line to present a check for $60,000, our representative of the Alcorn State University National Alumni Association, President Nettie Winters, historian Zell Marine Murphy, Secretary Denise Burns, Second Vice President Cynthia Bell, A-Club President Alvin Moore, and Richard Livingston, Chairman of the Fundraising Committee. This National Alumni Association gift is in support of the university and the $1 million Brave Strong campaign. 
calling all alumni to join or renew your membership today at www.allcorn.edu front slash alumni. And don't forget to support the $1 million Brave Strong campaign by December 31st, 2019. Thank you, Alcorn State University National Alumni Association, for leading the way. On Thursday evening, October 10, 2019, the Alcorn State University Division of Student Affairs under the direction of Vice President Mr. Tracy Cook and Director of Student Engagement Mr. Vina Hogan celebrated the coronation of the 93rd Miss Alcorn State University. Alcorn family, we are pleased to present you with your royal court for the academic year 2019-2020. Miss Freshman, Bria Fells of Gulfport, Mississippi, is being escorted by Business Manager Larry Lacey of Clinton, Mississippi. Miss Sophomore Ariel Simmons of Baton Rouge, Louisiana, is being escorted by First Vice President Kenneth Johnson of Huntsville, Alabama. Miss Junior Keziah Robinson of Bastrop, Louisiana, is being escorted by Tyreek James of Belzona, Mississippi. Miss Senior Aaron Cannon of Jackson, Mississippi, is being escorted by Casey Larry of Clarksdale, Mississippi. And Miss Alcorn State University, 2019-2020, Lady Jakaya Gray of Jackson, Mississippi, is being escorted by Acting SGA President James Harrington, Jr. of Fayette, Mississippi. And now, Dr. Felicia Ney will officially receive Miss Alcorn. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Alcorn State University, Lady Jakaya Gray. Or a court attire provided by I Candy Custom Clothiers of South Haven, Mississippi.
stayed on it after 25. Wow, took kind of a funny hop and a sideways roll, and it was recovered by Savannah State's Aaron Robinson. Well, that's as good as a touchback. <laughs> All right, Cedric, tell me, let's check in with you. Your thoughts going into this third quarter. As the Braves in this game are up 28 to 17. We'll check in with Cedric Tillman in a moment. First down and 10 for Gibbons and the offense. And they go back to the run. D'Angelo Durham with a three yard pickup to the 28. We're underway here in this third quarter. You talk about the running attack, D'Angelo Durham, that's his fourth carry for 30 yards. So second down coming up. Just underway in this third quarter. They scan here. And Devon Gibbons claps. A little option, and he'll keep it to the 30-yard line and drag down at the 34. It'll be a yard short of the first down. Third down and one coming up. Cedric Tillman, let's check in with you. Your thoughts as we go into the third quarter. Third down. So third down and one coming up. In this third quarter. 28 to 17, third down and one. There's Gibbons, we'll keep it. Gibbons, he's got the first down. Needed a yard, picks up two and a half. And a first down. So first down for Savannah State. Three and two on the season. They lost to Florida Tech 23-22. They beat Virginia Lynchburg 60 to 21. They beat Benedict 21-14, Morehouse 17-10, and they lost to Charleston Southern 24-19. They actually had a 19-7 lead in the third quarter and lost that game. Mm -hmm. So first down at the 36-yard line. Gibbons, play action, the lefty dances, and he sheds a tackler, gets away, and is going to be dragged down <coughs> for no gain. Well, the Braves had him for a sack. Got away from Jacorian Wren and scramble for no gain. Second down and 10. 12.42 left in this third quarter. Just underway. Tonight, Southern hosting Prairie View. On second down, go back to the run. The room again, hard run to the 40. One yard line, a five yard run. Going to bring up third down and five coming up. Third down and five, Cedric Tillman coming up for Savannah State. Yeah, we kind of escaped them. We could have had them lost for yards there, but uh, he kind of rolled that pile up here. Let's see if we can hold them here. Texas Southern and Missouri MNT 17 all at halftime. Texas Southern playing better. Coach McKinney, not a lot expected. That game, by the way, at the old Durley Stadium on campus. They brought that game back on campus. Mm. Third down and five. And they run the football here. Durham picks up a couple. Fourth down and three. And Savannah State will have to punt. I remember we played a couple of games over there at the old Durley Stadium. They refurbished it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm sure for, the, for a lot of TSU fans, based on what I've been reading on social media, glad that the game, at least this game, back on campus, back whether or not <coughs> it'll be permanent or not, I don't know. Well, it was, always, it was great to give your, your, your fans and your students the opportunity to be right there without having to travel all over Houston to see the team play. Here's a punting situation coming up here for Lugo. And it's going to go out of bounds around the 15-yard line. The 16 is where the Braves will have it. All right, let's see if the Braves can come out of here in this third quarter. Fast on offense, aggressive on defense. 
get this win before we get to the bye week. Halftime in Jackson, 14 to 10. Bama State over Jackson State. Grambling just kicked a field goal at home. 10 to nothing, Grambling over Alabama a and I I was on a talk show this morning and giving my prediction of that game. I said, it's hard to win in the hole. They call Eddie Robinson Memorial State in the hole. It's hard to win in the hole. 10 nothing, Grambling. First down, Harper's pass, and this is a catch wow. for Blair. First play. And uh, Juan Anthony, I'm sorry, he's got to go all the way. Juan Anthony is going to score. Just a quick hitter, no flags. 73 yards for Chris Blair. That's the seam route in the middle of post. And Cedric Tillman, he turned on the Jets, and he would not be denied. Yeah, that was a nice play. Another one of those flat uh, plays across the middle, and it was wide open, Charles. No safety. He split safeties and went to the, took it to the house. 73 yards. And Felix Harper with that is 290 yards passing. 13 of 17. So the Braves lead 34 to 17. The kick by McCullough is up, and it's good. 35 to 17. We'll take a one minute timeout. 1047 left. Braves 35. Savannah State 17. We'll take a one minute timeout. We'll be back. This is Braves Football. Thirty-five to seventeen on a touchdown pass. Juan Anthony, seventy-three yards. Here is the kick return from the seven-yard line to the ten to the fifteen to the twenty-yard line. Bounce it to the outside. Twenty-five steps out of a tackle. Thirty and ridden out of bounds. A flag out at the end. And this may be a face mask on Savannah State at the very end. The block in the back or a face mask. Marker at the 45 yard line. Fielding obviously further back up field. During the return, blocking below the waist, number 11 on return to the 15 yard penalty, be first down. No blocking below the waist on Savannah State. And it's going to be on Malik Fleming. All right, the Savannah State Tigers have it at the 21-yard line. Tell you what, for the struggles that Texas Southern has had, they're quietly you know, becoming more competitive here the last few weeks. Nobody's really talking about them. On first down, and quarterback Evans will keep it, and he stood up and dropped at the 20-yard line. A loss of a yard. Well, Fred McNair, he sounded a little worried, but he figured his team would come out in the second half. And Solomon Muhammad with the tackle. He figured in the second half, his team would step up. Offensively, they just did with a touchdown, a big play. Now, let's see if the defense can complement the offense here. Second and 11 from the 20. Ten minutes left in the third quarter. Braves with a 35-17 lead over Savannah State. On second down. Little inside trap play, and that's for no gain. Back at the 20-yard line. Well, Cedric Tillman, the Braves are getting good penetration here in this third quarter, third down, and 11 coming up. We got a flag on the other side of the field. Something happened with the receiver and uh, defensive back there. 27, he's coming off the field. I'm looking at the line of scrimmage and something on the back end. 
Bengals just don't need any more of these penalties to help the opposition. All right, let's check this marker. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, 84 on the offense. Be half the distance, third down. Well, it's going to be on Savannah State. Back them up to the 10 yard line. Third down and 21. 9.51 left in quarter number three. Third and 21 from the 10. The Braves with a 35-17 lead over Savannah State. A third down and long for Devon Givens, the junior quarterback from Stone Mountain, Georgia. Third down and long. Givens on third down, a little check down the edge, caught at the 10-yard line. Ridden out of bounds at the 15, D'Angelo Durham. So to bring up fourth down. 9.24 left. So the Braves defense, Cedric Bush gets off the field. That's it. They came out on, they came out on fire that time. Uh, Coach McNair said it before he left for the halftime. He said, oh, they'll be different when they come back in the second half. So they're showing it right about now. Well, fourth down and long. And Lugo standing at his one yard line. The snap and the kick. And it's going to be caught at the 42 yard line and going out of bounds. With the catch and going out of bounds. So first down, on Anthony out of bounds. 45-yard uh, line, first down at 10. All right, so the Braves have settled down this game a little bit. Got a touchdown that they needed coming out of the locker room. Stunned away in the third quarter from Jackson, 14-10. to 10. Bama State, Missouri, s and and Texas Southern tied at 17. They're getting ready for the third quarter. And uh, Grambling with a 10-0 lead over Alabama A&M. And Felix Harper, and now here is Waller to the 50-yard line. Gets a good block, and Waller gets first down run to the 35-yard line. A gain of 20. Well, first down, Deshaun Waller on the stretch play. First down at the 34. Play action for Harper. Looks, hits as he throws. High and going to be incomplete for Blair that one official is going to talk with the other and he was ridden out of bounds and Blair didn't like well, the call. It looked like he got a foot down then. Well, I'd like to see that. Mm -hmm. See. I'd like to check that play out if we could. <laughs> Second down and 10 from the 34 bar. Felix Harper has been getting pressure throughout this game. He's been sacked twice on second down and 10. And on second down, here's Waller cutting it back inside for a yard gain. Well, Cedric Chillin, we've got the momentum, but we're faced with a third and nine coming up. Yeah, let's see what we do here. Let's see Waller pick up that big game, uh, get back back to that running game. Let's see if we can pick it up here, Charles. Could be four down territory. You're looking at a 51-yard field goal attempt if you don't pick up another yard here. But you also, with a very light wind, you're kicking against the wind. If you pick up some yards here, it could be in McCullough's range. We'll see here on this play. Third down and nine. Raise up 35 to 17. Play action for Felix Harper. Steps up. Harper can take off. 25. Harper to the 20. Cuts back. 15 to the 10. To the 5. Harper to the 1. Harper, 33-yard run. He's electric, man. So first and goal from the two. We'll make it the one and a half. Oh, we have a fumble. Wow. And let's see here. Savannah State says they have it. And they do have it. At the one-yard line. I'd like to see that play right there. Harper 
Let it slip out of his hand. That's the second turnover, Cedric Tillman, at the one-yard line. Yeah, he never had it. He tried to give it to him, but the ball just kind of laid on his hip, and you know, it, he never got it on, you know, in his bread basket, so it, it came out. Wow. Turnovers and penalties. So the Braves had a chance really to put some distance between themselves and Savannah State. And now the Tigers have it at the one-yard line. Maybe a quarterback sneak here by Givens to give him some room. Up now, he'll step out of the shotgun. He was under center and he's out of the shotgun. Braves showing pressure here. We got a flag down. A false start. Snap infraction. Number 50 on the offense. Half the distance. Half the distance. The half yard line. 7.15 left, halfway through this uh, third quarter. Braves led 28-17 at the breaker. Juan Anthony, 73-yard pass from Felix Harper at the half-yard line. Uh, I'll send pressure. <laughs> now, first down here is Durham. Plows his way to the four, pick up a three. Second down and seven. Seven to play in this third quarter. Arkansas Pine Bluff final from Golden Alliance Stadium. They beat Valley 38 to 6. 38-6. Well, good bounce back for UAPB. They lost 31 to 7 to Southern a couple of weeks ago. I tell you what, Pine Bluff's not gonna be an easy out in that Western Division. They got Southern coming up. Grambling. It's going to be interesting. Uh, Pine Bluff might have a say in this thing in the Western Division. Second down and seven. Little option. Quarterback will keep it, and it's going to be tackled where? At the one and a half. So to bring up third down. have a marker down as well didn't see the marker but there is one let's check it Dead ball. Personal, personal foul nice against the frame oh, oh, no. after the great defensive play continuing action Cedric Tillman yeah it's that same receiver 84 he's being active over there on that side well, uh, that's a new set of downs, and that just got Savannah State out of the hole. Wow. First down at the 19. Uh, Got to work on these penalties in the bye week for sure. And the quarterback will keep it. He's to the 25, trying to step out of a tackle, and is dragged down after about a five-yard pickup, close to six. Well, this quarterback, Gibbons, can make it happen. 6'3", 205-pound junior. Into the 24-yard line, five-yard pickup, second and five, with 5.46 left in this third quarter. Alcorn 35 and Savannah State 17. Second down and five. Gibbons out of the shotgun as they scan. Looks like Carter in the backfield, a freshman from Poughkeepsie, New York. New York. I think I said it right. Second down and five. Option, and he'll keep it. Turns it upfield <laughs> and is dropped at the 26-yard line where it's third down and two coming up, two and a half. So a long two needed. Cedric Bush, five minutes left, third and two. Third and two. He, he would have gotten the first down. He ran into his own guard trying to pull the block for him. Well, it's a chance to get off the field after a brave turnover at their one-yard line. They're going to run that option again. They, they, they have a success with that. We haven't really stopped that consistently yet. Third down and a couple at the 26. They need to get just beyond the 28 for the first down. So third and a long two. Play clock at two. And just a straight down. Givens spun around and no about a half yard gain. And I'll bring up fourth down. Fourth down. Fourth down and a yard and a half. With 4.20 left in the third. Braves with a 35 to 17 lead, and they're going to punt it away here. Oh, well, drive that started at their one, Cedric Tillman. We got off the field. 
Yeah, we, we caught a break there, and definitely the defense held on uh, right there. Let's see if we can uh, get the ball back and put this ball in the end zone again. Yeah, Juan Anthony back. Lugo on the kick. Well, Anthony already an active game, a touchdown, a snap, and the kick. Tight spiral, fair catch call for it made at the 27. So we'll take a break with 344 left in the third quarter. The Braves with the ball in the lead, 35 to 17. We'll be back in 60 seconds on the Alcorn Football Radio Network. During the break, Juan Anthony with a seven-yard pickup, second down and three, and here's Waller to the 40. Waller down the sideline and goes out of bounds at the 46. It's a first down. He approached three minutes left in this third quarter. It was 28-17 at the break. Remember, the Braves... Only had one touchdown against Bama State in the second half. I'm sure Fred McNair talked about the importance of continuing to be fast in the second half. And here's Waller. Bounces it to the outside. Sheds two tacklers. Three. And Waller. Good run to the 39-yard line. A gain of six. 240 left in the third quarter. We're off next week. And in two weeks from today... The Jaguar Nation will be here in that defense, Jags defense. Well, that drives me crazy. Defense, Jags. You no, know, they, you know, they don't say it with that much enthusiasm. It's, it's kind of dry and dead and drives you crazy. On second down is Trey <laughs> Turner to the 20. 15-yard line, and it's a first down. A little change of pace. Trey Turner. Cedric Tillman, give us your thoughts. You talk about Waller and Trey Turner. What do you think about their running styles? Well, I think Trey Turner is more of a downhill runner. Waller can, you know, he'll, he'll bounce it. You know, he can run inside as well, but he'll bounce it. But uh, two different style running backs, but uh, great performance by both. Change of pace, and Savannah State's going to take a timeout on defense. Today's game, all corn in Savannah State here on the Brady Sports Network, is brought to you in part by C Spire. When it comes to football, faster is better. Touchdown! Same goes for your wireless network. That's why C Spire is now two times faster. Faster downloads, faster connections, faster everything. Stay in the game all season long with the powerful C Spire network. Now two times faster. C Spire, customer inspired. Get the 11 as low as $199 with trade in. Details at cspire.com. C Spire, a proud member of the Braves athletic family. Don't forget the Fred McNair Radio Show Monday night. We'll talk about this one. I'm sure we'll have to talk about it as we get ready for the bye week. We'll be looking at Southern and Preview tonight at 6 o'clock. Two hours, oh, hour and 50 minutes from kickoff down at Mumford. I think I can make it down there by halftime, Judge Bush, with this crowd. Plenty of the helicopter. Here is... Uh, <laughs> Felix Harper with the carry. They look for Anthony on the end around. Harper kept it for a two-yard pickup. Second down. And then I remember one time, one year, we had a home game here at 1 o'clock, and Jackson State hosted Southern. Mm -hmm. And I made it. Really? I made it. For, yeah, I made it. <laughs> I, I can't remember who we were playing. I mean, it was a good crowd, but I was able to get out of here. And, yeah, we were able to get out of here, but not today. <laughs> and head to Jackson to see, to see that game kick off. I mean, of course, I 
I had to say I broke the law. Yeah. That was 20 years ago. I broke the law. But, you know, anyway. Here's Trey. Nope, there's a play fake, and the pass is caught, and it's Juan Anthony to the two-yard line. Yeah, they're, they're trying to get the homecoming now. <laughs> so. They mark him at the three. That's the quick hitter. Cedric Tillman, one thing about Felix Harper, he gets the ball out of his hands quick. Yeah, yeah, he does. He, he gets it out there, and he, he knows who he's going to throw it to, you know. Yeah. So he, he sees that receiver, and, and he hits him in stride. First and goal from the three. Be careful here. Remember, we turned it over last time we were down here. We're under a minute left in the third quarter. Rolling right along, 35-17. Here is Trey Turner. Trey Turner gets into the end zone. Touchdown. Turner from three yards out. And for Trey Turner, that is his second touchdown of the year. And the Braves lead 41 to 17, a little bit of a cushion with 39 seconds left in the third quarter. When you talk about starting fast in the third, the Braves had a turnover but came right back, a couple of scores. And, uh, you know, you look at Savannah State, they do tend to wear down in the second half. Of course, the first year fully D2 snapback ball now. Kick is good. 42 to 17, our score. We'll take a one minute break. We'll be right back after this, winding up the third quarter. Braves looks like on their way to their fourth win in a row, leading 42 to 17. Back in a minute on the Alcorn Football Radio Network. Glad you can join us here on this Saturday. However way you might be watching and or listening, you can uh, watch this game online, allcornsports.com slash phrase all access. Checking it out. And, of course, the Southern game. Well, the Jaguar Nation will be here in two weeks. Here is the kick. And it's going to be caught at the six-yard line, trying to reverse this field to the 10 to the 15, uh, the 18-yard line, and that's as far as it goes. Mark him at the 19-yard line with 32 seconds left. You know, that's a huge game tonight. Preview already has a loss in the conference, and, of course, that was here. Mm -hmm. And if Southern wins that game, Southern will have control of the Western Division with Preview with two losses. Mm -hmm. The Jaguars, of course, beat UAPB. But if Southern loses that game, then you got Southern with a loss and Prairie with a loss, and Prairie has a tiebreaker. And Southern comes here in two weeks, and I, if Southern loses tonight at home, the Braves I think will have an opportunity to almost knock Southern out of the race. Hmm. Here is a, a keep, keeper, a quarterback keeper, and Gibbons picks up nine yards, and it'll take us to the end of the third quarter. Grambling leads A and M as the Bulldogs on the board. With six minutes left in the third quarter, a slog at Memorial at Eddie Robinson Memorial Stadium, ten to seven. Grambling with the lead over Alabama A and M. Savannah State doesn't have to run another play, and I don't think they will. That'll take us to the end of the third quarter here on Homecoming. Braves a quarter away from their fourth win in a row. Braves forty-two and Savannah State seventeen. We'll take a one-minute break. We'll be right back. This is all Corn Braves football.
42 to 17. The Braves outscore Savannah State 14 to nothing in the third quarter. Gibbons. I'm just going to hand the ball off here. Durham to the 30 yard line. Of course, you look at the game here in two weeks. Southern and Darius Skelton will be here. Skelton from Pine Bluff played at home a couple of weeks ago. And uh, Southern's got Prairie View coming up in the next hour, 45 minutes. And I was on a show earlier today. Of course, we'll be talking with Carlos Brown on the pregame show in two weeks. It's Carlos Brown, a radio show. Here's a pass, and it's incomplete. Well, they don't throw it that much. And that time, they had the wide receiver, Cameron White, wide open. You know, my thoughts on that Southern preview game, and I've said it earlier, just don't know if Southern's got enough offense or defense to keep up with Preview. I mean, Preview right now is scoring points. Of course, last year Southern shut them out 38 to nothing at Panther Stadium. But this year I think the Panthers' offense is better than they were last year, and that's due to Dewanya Tucker, I think. And they run the football here with Durham. The Braves have outgained Savannah State 453 to 219. The Braves running game getting back on track at 28 yards at halftime, 107 yards running the football in the third quarter. So they've got 135 yards rushing. And Felix Harper, 318 yards passing, 15 of 20 for 318 and five touchdowns. Well, he is, he's, as they say, he's slinging it <laughs> and stretching it. Play action. Here's a pass caught, and it's a first down and a couple of missed tackles and a first down. Uh -huh. uh, with that catch uh, to Cameron White, the grad student, 6'4", 215-pound grad student. It's a first down, minute and a half into this fourth quarter. Of course, Alabama State without their starting quarterback. I thought maybe with that, Jackson State might be able to win on homecoming, but it's a struggle for Jackson State at this point. First down. You know, back to the run in Durham. And this Judge Bush for Jackson State, it's their first home, well, I should I say, first conference game. It's odd at this point. Here you are, halfway through October is your first conference game. Right. For homecoming. And it's not looking too well for you. 5-19 in the third quarter from Memorial Stadium. 21-10, Bama State over Jackson State. Grambling late third quarter still. He's 10-7. Now uh -oh, the play continues, and here's a pass deep downfield, and the receiver's open, and this ball is incomplete. It was underthrown. Oh, we're going to get another flag. <laughs> wow. So the Braves were offsides on defense. We're going to get a pass interference, perhaps, on the back end of this. Markers all over the place. And they'll have to sort this thing out. Now, the one on the back end, they're discussing. Yeah. The referee's going to have to run 35 yards to get the clarification on the potential pass interference on the back end of it. And, and the field judge and the back judge is talking about it. One had a better look than the other, and now the referee will interject. Good piece of officiating here and just talking it out. It still might stand. He might pick it up, but nonetheless, a conversation is had about that play, Cedric Tillman. Yeah, uh, this is part of that. I'll saying that we don't have face guard in his college. No. So. <laughs> All right, Number three fouls on the play. Offside, defense, number 84, 94. That penalty is declined. Pass interference, defense, number 15. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Well, they're going to call Kinsler on the pass interference. So they're saying he made contact before the ball got there? Yeah. Wow. That's a tough one right there, Cedric Tillman. Yeah, they put him in a great field position right here. Nope. 12.41 left. And they're at the 28-yard line of all corner. Savannah State still grinding. Braisley 42-17 here in the fourth quarter with 12.41 left. Gibbons, option right, we'll keep it, 30. Oh, and he is 
Platt at the 26 yard line. Uh, gain of a couple, second and eight with 12 and a half minutes left. First final on this Saturday, Pine Bluff bounces back. They beat Valley 38 to six. Final score from Golden Lions Stadium. Wonder is that a rivalry? Pine Bluff Valley, two schools, two hours away, two states. Is that a rivalry? Yeah, uh, okay. <laughs> is that about the best way to look at it? Yeah, some, I mean, some say yes. Some geographically they're the cl closest. The closest of what you know, other than us, you know, us in Jackson. You know, we're, we're 50. How far are we from Jackson? An hour, fifteen minutes. An hour, fifteen minutes. You're a good two hours from Valley to Pine Bluff. Yeah. Carter with the carry. Third down and six coming up. I mean, you don't get the sense that that's a rivalry. Well, I see a play. lot of Valley folks here today. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, so it didn't strike them about going over there for that. Third down and six. Four down territory, I think, at the 24-yard line. They scan. Three and a half minutes into this fourth quarter. Raise 42 and Savannah State 17. Third down and six. Here's an option pitch, and this is going to be close at the 20 yard line. Durham, shoestring tackle. And it'll bring up fourth down and short on the tackle key. Fourth down and two from the 20. Need to get to the 18. Fourth and a couple. Under 11 minutes, 10.55 left. I mean, you're down 25 points. You're going to go for it here, obviously. 15 on the play clock. Savannah State is two timeouts. So fourth and a couple from the 20-yard line. Got to watch the quarterback. Got to watch Durham. Goes out in motion, and he'll keep it. And he lunges forward, and he's got the first down. Fell forward, just got it, it appears. It is close. Referee looks at the football, looks at the sticks, so they're going to call for a measurement. Yep, call for a measurement. From here, it looked like he, he stretched it out at the end and got, got the first down. Let's see here. Got the binoculars. Yeah. Let me stretch it out. By nose. You got it. I don't want to use the field crooked analogy. <laughs> you know who uses that one. Yeah. First down at the 18-yard line. Four and a half minutes into the third quarter. Braves are up 42-17, but now Savannah State in the red zone. Bama State over Jackson State 24-10 to in the third quarter. First and 10 from the 18 yard line. And they run the football and slip it away and miss it a tackle. Durham, how'd he get out of that scrum? Cedric Tillman on that right side and turned it up the middle for a gain of about eight. Well, I'm not sure if he ran behind his own lineman, but I do know that they, the linebacker did take the quarterback, so uh, he gave it off on the dive, so I'm not sure how he come out of that pile. All right, second down and eight. And we have a fumble. Ball loose. Braves say they have it, and they do. Braves get the football. Chris Monroe with the recovery. Well, this has been a turnover play game, Cedric Tillman, and we get our second turnover. Monroe picked up the fumble. <laughs> yeah. Chris Romo come out of that foul with that ball. You know, when they all in that power, you just can't tell who, who has the ball or whatever, but you try to see who comes up with the football, and definitely Chris came out of that way. All right, so 9.42 left. Braves have the football in the lead. You have Akeem McNair, Tim McNair off to the right side. Like Everett at a tight end, Waller in the backfield. So the Braves have the football at the 15-yard line. And here is Waller falling forward for a two-yard pickup. Well, as you look ahead to Southern University coming up, Cedric Bush is a Missouri S&T, leads Texas Southern late third, 23-17. What do you think about that Prairie View Southern game tonight? I think it'll be a high-scoring game, but it just... 
it's Southern's offense, I mean, they run the football. They had 239 running against UAPB a couple of weeks ago. Can Skelton manage the game to where when things don't go right, if they can't run the football, Skelton can't be a hero? And they run it again with Waller, bounces it out of the pile, trying to turn it up, and he loses yards back to the 15-yard line. So it'll bring up third down and 10. Um, Charles, they, if they were at neutral side or if they were going to Houston, I would say that, but they're going to Baton Rouge. They like to turn the, I mean, the lights like to, you know, accidentally go off. <laughs> you know, the clock stops. You know, a lot of things happen over in Baton Rouge, so I'm just, I'm just waiting to see. I'm just waiting to see that tonight. Third down and long. Third down and nine coming up. Bray scan. Eight and a quarter left. It's the game of the week today, that's for sure. That's it, no doubt about it. Southern made sure they told us last year we'll be back to oh. play this game again. Oh, well, look, Waller lost the handle. Oh, yeah. Felix Harper just took it away and just had to eat it. And, wow. Uh, yeah. And there's a flag as Harper thrown back after the whistle blew. It's going to be a unsportsmanlike against Savannah State. A lot of laundry in this game. You know, some continuing action and now some talking. With both players, things getting a little chippy here with 8.05 left. All right, here's the call. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 62 on defense, the 15-yard penalty, automatic first down, as number 62's first unsportsmanlike, Jordan Dix. Unsportsmanlike against Randall Corey, mm -hmm. the lineman. Yeah, when you do things like that, you only hurt your team. I mean, you know, that's, you're frustrated, but, you know, just go back and play the next play. You do stuff like that, you heard your team and moved up 15 yards. Of course, we've had our share of that, unfortunately. Oh, yeah. And Braves have it at the 32. Braves are going to get off the field here. Here's uh, Harper straight ahead, Trey Turner for a yard. Well, so, yep, Trey Turner for a yard yeah, game. Yeah, they're coming up stacking the box and on us now. It's. <laughs> That's, I think we're trying to get out and get to homecoming, and uh, they're stacking the box on us. I think, I think for preview, I mean, Dewanya Tucker's the difference to me. Last year, it just seemed like he yeah. wasn't, I don't know if he was injured or what, but he wasn't quite as involved and as explosive. Yeah. I think it was the MVP of that State Fair Classic against Grambling. Yeah. I mean, when you got Tucker going and you got their quarterback slinging it, Preview's a tough machine to slow down. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see tonight. Uh, uh, Southern's going to play good defense, and uh, they're going to grind it. They're going to grind it. You know, if, if Preview comes out and be patient, work the offense, you know, do the things they do, I think it's going to be a great ball game. It's just a matter of who has the ball last. Trey Turner with a five-yard pickup. So the Braves will be faced with a third down. The Braves have three receivers to the left. King McNair. Tim McNair Jr. to the right, the lone receiver to the right side. Pringle wide left. So you have a receiver wide left, two slot to the left. Tim McNair Jr. wide right on third down and five. Harper looks, throws, and the pass is caught. It's going to be a first down. Juan Anthony. First down for the Braves with 6.15 left. Here in the fourth quarter, boy, it turned out to be a pretty day, although a chilly day here on the beautiful campus. Drive careful heading home. Enjoy your bye week, and let's bring on the Jaguar Nation. Yes, sir. We need that week, I think, just to get some of these bubbles healed up and get a chance to work on these penalties and stuff because we're moving to a championship play now. It's, it's time to clean all this up because the teams we're going to play down the road, those are good teams. We can't get by playing those teams. Look at the way we look, you know, as far as the penalties go. And the Braves run the football here. Waller. I see former Brave uh, Tavares Johnson is doing some coaching up in the Cleveland, Mississippi oh, yeah. area. He was up here earlier. Um, I wonder, is he down on the field? We said we would talk with him. But uh, Cedric Bush, you saw a bunch of former Alka Knights oh, on the uh, – in the tailgate area before the game. It's just a, a who's who of Braves football. Yeah, they, they had all guys, everybody over there. Like I said, the Isaac Hopes is over there. The uh, Milton Barney came in. He's, this is the first time he's been back since 1986. 
you know, you got, you know, guys over there, Tommy Carr, you hadn't been back since 84. You know, it's, it's, it's amazing just to see the campus and everything. And now a good hard run here, oh, kind of a missing change. Yeah. Came a marsh, a little sloppy here, Cedric Tillman. Uh, some s bobble exchanges. Yeah, I was kind of making a joke when I saw him in there, and everybody said, "Yeah, they remember all the hard runs he uh, cleanup job he did last week in Montgomery." So a lot of people are excited to see him out there. <laughs> is the Tavares Johnson? Did you see? Is he still down there? Yeah, there he's in the end zone. So we might get a couple of words with him if possible. Third down and a couple coming up here as the Braves scan. Play clock at six. Braves is taking time off the clock. 4.13 left. Here's Marsh again. Marsh corkscrewed and dropped right at the marker. He may be a little short. With four minutes left here in this fourth. So what's Fred McNair going to do here? Fourth down and short. You know, let this clock wind down and Fred McNair's going to take a timeout. Let's just take some time off the clock. Yep. So the Braves take a timeout time and we'll take it with them with 325 left in the fourth. Back in one minute, 42 to 17. All four. Back in a minute, this is Braves football. Cedric Tillman, Juan Anthony. Juan Anthony on the post game. See Noah Johnson down on the field, Cedric Bush with a swing. Yeah, that, that does look good. And, uh, Fred McNair said right now it's Felix Harper's team on fourth down. It looks like it's going to be a first down. With uh, 319 left here in this fourth quarter. And I'm agreeing with Coach Fred McNair. This is his team. He's, you know, he's a rising star. He's doing it, doing his part. Um, North comes back before the season is out. He's going to be able to help. Ball be brought back to the line. Right the now, I think uh, Harper's doing a great job with carrying the team and leading the team. Well, I thought he had a first down there, uh, Cedric. Bush. They're going to measure this thing. Wow. It, it looked for me like he had it. Let's see. Yeah, I was about to start singing a song, you know, Dan done it, done it, done murder. We used to sing. Yeah. Uh, Turn out the light. Yeah. Of those. First down. So it's a first down at the 47-yard line with 3:19 left. And it looks like uh, we've got a quarterback change. Hmm. Here in the fourth quarter, I believe Russell, yep, Jarman Russell in the game for the Braves at quarterback. All right, so Jarman Russell getting some action. Russell, one of two for nine yards. Hmm. So Jarman Russell in the game. And there's a good hard run to the 35-yard line. A first down run. Uh -huh. 
Turner. First down run for the Braves, Jonathan Bolton. So Bolton getting a kid. We're sitting here telling Fred McNair talking about the whole quarterback situation. Right now it's Felix Harper's team and coach has been asked how you deal with it. He's like, look, we've been here before. John Gibbs went down. Lenore Flitman went down. Now Noah Johnson is down. This next man up. And that's how Fred McNair said you're telling us handle this. That's right. And then, uh, you know, it's like you said, it's his team, so uh, Auburn definitely carrying the load for the team. But if you see Noah Johnson in that sling, and we just hope he gets back as quickly as possible. Of course, we'll have a couple of weeks for him to heal and do his rehab and recovery. Fred McGinn didn't want to put a percentage on it. He said he'll just leave that up to the doctors and trainers and let them figure it out. 20 on the play clock, one... 40 left, probably two more plays. So we're going to talk with Juan Anthony and uh, Fred McNair on the post-game show. As the Braves are going to win yet another one and get, enjoy the bye week and enjoy homecoming. And uh, handed off the ball. Of course, John Russell went down. He didn't slide in that first uh, home game, and he was injured. And it was a pretty tough hit at 107 left, but good to see him get some snaps here, finishing this game off. Those Jaguars will come in here in two weeks, a two o'clock kickoff. We'll have the Alcorn pregame show at 1.30. We'll talk with Carlos Brown, and we'll talk with Braves uh, band director. We hope to have him on. Of course, that's always a big game of uh, human jukebox performing at halftime as well. Here's Bolton to the 35-yard line. 30 seconds left. Braves don't have to snap it again. Turn out the last part is over. Time for homecoming. Yep, you can enjoy homecoming in the next 20 seconds. Uh, Fred McNair said it. He said that let's take care of business and then we enjoy homecoming when it's over. That's right. And uh, it's 10 seconds left. The Braves don't have to snap it. Both teams heading to the sideline. And uh, this game will come to an end as the Braves will head to the bye week on a nice little run here. Victories over Preview Valley, Bama State, and Savannah State. Four in a row heading into the bye week as the Braves win by the final score of 42 to 17. So we'll step away. A one minute timeout coming up. We hope to hear from Juan Anthony as well as uh, Fred McNair. I see Juan Anthony, by the way, Cedric Tillman at the 45 yard line right behind Cedric Thornton. So we'll take a timeout. We'll be right back in 60 seconds. This is Braves football. Braves win by the final score of 42 to 17 here on homecoming 2000.
19. Glad you could join us here on the Braves Sports uh, Radio Network. We hope to catch up with Juan Anthony on the uh, post-game show. Uh, I guess we got Fred McNair first, so as the Braves win by the final score of 42 to 17, let's go down on the field. Cedric Tillman is with Braves head football coach Fred McNair. Well, Coach, it, it, it definitely got a win, but, you know, a couple of miscues there in the first half, but we were able to put together something there. Yeah, we come out in the second half and uh, executed well. Defense came up with a stop. We, we, we plugged it in. Then we had another drive down there. We, we turned it over uh, on the, on the one-yard line. So we put that one in. I mean, we just got to get better. We're doing some things that we're not, we're not supposed to do. So uh, we're going to fix that this week and, and get ready for a good Southern team coming in in two weeks. So uh, preparation, get these guys healed up and, and um, get them back. So that's the biggest thing now. we got a week off and get these guys healed up, man. So Yeah, very, very tough team. Everybody thought maybe it would just be an easy win, but uh, they was a tough, pretty tough football team. No, I know Savannah State was going to come in, man. They, they've been tough, man. They, they was in the MEAC before now, so mm-hmm. they're a Division One school. I know it's coming down to D2 right now, but they still got the kind of athlete that it takes to win ball games, you know, and they only have 30 scholarships and, you know, if they had a, a full 63, they could be a force to be working with. So, um, you know, unfortunately, you know, we, we did what we had to do to take care of this one. And uh, that's, that's big time for us, man. And uh, going into a bye week at five and two, man, and it's a, it's a commitment and a blessing to, uh, to these guys. It's a testament to where these guys have been playing all season, man. So we just got to get back to form and um, fundamental stuff we got to work on and, and attitude we got to work on. So we got to get rid of that stuff, man. So, um you know, it's a great win, and we'll enjoy this one and get ready for a good Southern football team coming on 26. Well, last couple of weeks, it was nice to kind of see uh, Juan Anthony back in a little uh, form uh, there. Coach. Oh, yeah, no doubt, man. Juan, bring, he got another dimension to that program, man. He, he's a good, good receiver, great athlete, a good person in general, man. These young men that come out and, and fight hard and work hard every day in the course of the week to get better for Saturday, man. It's an outstanding job that they're doing and a testament to the coaching where they, where they bring the kids along. Okay, Coach. Thank you, sir. All right, Charles. All right, Cedric. Uh, we appreciate it. Um, I guess the team, maybe when they come back out, maybe we can get Juan Anthony if it's possible. Uh, the players head into the locker room, and uh, they'll come back out. You know, they're instructed to kind of go in the locker room, get the speech, and then come back out. So maybe we'll get Juan Anthony. I see Radarius Anderson. Uh, there and he was kind of shaken up early on uh, so we'll try to get Juan Anthony who had a big game here tonight so we'll take a one minute break we'll be right back we'll recap the action and uh, kind of enjoy this one and get ready for Southern Southern playing Prairie View in the next hour and 15 minutes they got 75 minutes on the clock over there at Mumford Stadium big game in the conference on this Saturday last week it was all Corn Bama State tonight it's Southern Prairie View on the Bluff. Will, will that game be televised tonight? It's going to be on ESPN3.com, I believe. Okay, so if you're out there listening, get a chance to check it out. Tell us about it.